Hello, and welcome to Tip of the Week. This is Ken Colgan with CADTech Seminars, and what we're going to cover today is orphaned objects in Revit MEP. This also may happen in Revit Architecture and Revit Structure, but most of the time I've seen it in the MEP series. So uh, let's take a look at it and uh, see what happens. If you have questions about our company and what we do and what we have to offer, you can check us out on the web at cadtechseminars.com. You can see it right here. And I um, hope you enjoyed the video. Here we go. I'm going to jump on over to Revit here. And in Revit, you'll see this is Revit 2013, but it works in uh, all versions of things we'll do. We're going to do two things here. Number one, we're going to talk about how, um, how to deal with one of your objects that becomes orphaned. Um, and then how to adjust it and then how to avoid it happening in the future. So let's take a look at what happens here. This is again Revit 2013 and I'm going to take a look at this floor plan. Now when I zoom out here you'll notice that I have these uh, have some elements here like this one here. Now a lot of times what happens is the, the, the architect or the person you're working with that you have linked to, uh, we have linked to the architect's file, the architect actually takes his ceiling let me tab over it so we can actually grab it. Uh, this is the space, but it gives you the idea. Takes their ceiling, and instead of moving it or adjusting the size and style, they delete it and then redraw it. The, each one of these elements that are hosted, they're sitting on that element, okay? Now, it's hosted by that linked ceiling. So behind the scenes, this element, like this speaker, knows it's linked or hosted by this element in the linked model. There's a number and all that behind the, behind the scenes. If you open up the model again, let's say load a new uh, background, and you notice that you've got these items and they say they're orphans, chances are it's because the architect has either deleted the ceiling and replaced it with a new, or has deleted a wall and replaced it with a new. And what happens is that speaker knows it's, let's say, associated with ceiling 123. Well, ceiling 123 doesn't exist anymore, and now what's underneath it is ceiling 567 or you know, 2708, whatever it is. So this item becomes orphaned or it just kind of floats out in space and doesn't really have a host. The problem with that is if it's a hosted element, you'll notice currently that we can't change uh, any of the numbers here because it's sitting on the hosted element. Now, just to see how it works, I've got this, these two speakers here. And what I'm going to do just quickly is I'm going to uh, use command CS to create similar. And I'm going to come over here and place it, uh, another one on the ceiling. Now I'm going to go place it on a face, and I'm going to put it here. Now let's talk a little bit about why hosted items are good, and then we'll talk about why they're bad. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, and I'm going to double click on the section. It opens up, and you'll see we have this speaker, and it's hosted in the ceiling. If I grab this ceiling, all right, and now let's say this ceiling gets moved up or down. Let's say it goes to nine feet. Being that it's hosted, that's great. So that element is moving with the ceiling. The downside is, if this was duct work, and the ducts were right here, and I had hard duct, my ducts would totally flip out, because it couldn't make that turn anymore to the static duct here, which was not going to move. The diffusers move up, and everything goes to hell in a handbasket. So, uh, let's take a look on now how to fix the problem, if we have it, um, and look at some options. Okay, so we're going to go back, hit control tab, and we're back where we were. So here we are, and we'll do one scenario. I'm going to grab this element, and I'm going to move it out here, and it's going to lose its association. So I'm going to come over here, hit Move. I grab the element, and I slot it out in space here. Now, when I place it, it says, Warning, Instance Origin is not placed in face. You see, it will lose its association to the host. So you'll even either get uh, one of these if they've, let's say, deleted an element, or you'll get um, orphaned. Both of them have the same scenario. I can't change it. Now you'll say, well, Ken, I'm just going to go into the 3D, I'll go into my elevation or section, and I'm just going to move it. Well, let's see just how well that works. I'm going to hit Control Tab, and I'm back in the sec. I thought I was back in the section. I think I had too many things open. Okay, now, here I am. So I grab this element, and I go hit the Move command. Move it. I pick a base point, and I try to drag it up. Notice, not happening. So, how do we remove these elements once they're in place? Now, we could maybe go swap it out with another object or whatever, but this is a hosted object. So what we're running to is, I've just got, let's say, 15 speakers. I have to move up two feet. 
or I've got to move them up to wherever the architect moved the new ceiling to. So how can I get these to move without causing a lot of grief? I've got them circuited, I've got all this stuff set up, how do I get them to work right? So uh, to, to accommodate what we have, what we can do is I'm going to take this ceiling and I'm going to actually move it up. You see it's 9 feet, I'm going to move it up to 10 feet. Just to show you, now uh, we'll go back again to that section, and you'll notice that the ceiling is up at 10 feet and this is sitting below. One way to fix it, we're going to cover a few, is you can grab the element and up top you'll see it says, uh, right here, drop this down, it says edit work plane or pick new. When I hit pick new, I can then float over the surface and see face, I can replace it. Now you're thinking, oh man, that's, that's just going to be a pain. I've got to do that for every one of them. Well, that's one option. So let's go ahead and undo on that. Another option is to host it to a predetermined level that you've designed. You may consider doing this in the beginning because if you are the, let's say, mechanical guy and you put in your own, let's say, uh, levels and you tie the elements to the levels, they do not move with the ceiling anymore. So you as a designer get the ability to move them up and down they're not hosted in the ceiling at first it seems like a great idea I'll just host in the architect ceiling but if there's a lot of changes going on what happens is the ceilings get moved and changed and all your objects start to be orphaned and you lose control of them so there are some easier ways to do it one is don't use hosted objects find objects that are standalone and you place them nine feet off of the ground that will take care of the problem here's an example we're going to go to systems air terminal. Now, uh, whoop, I thought there was one loaded. I'm just going to go load one in real quick. Let's go to uh, mechanical. Okay, MEP, air side components, uh, air terminals. And you'll see we have some in here as we move through. You'll notice that some of them it says hosted, right? And this one says nothing. So I pick this guy. I hit open. Now when it comes in I need to place it. Watch what happens. See, it says level 1 offset. So it has no bearing on the object that I'm placing it on. You notice there are no hosting tools up top. So I can say, let's place this guy 9 feet in the air. Now it may take a little bit more doing, but now you have full control. I'm going to place this guy 9 feet in the air, and I think he might be turned off in this view. So we're just going to come over here, and I'll just, uh, let's say, place him out here. Now, none of the objects are in here because it's turned off. That's fine. We'll go hit the light bulb. There's the diffuser. I'll place a couple more here. Okay. And maybe one right here. Just so you can see how these things work. Now, I've placed them in, and let's make them visible now. Right click, unhide in view, category. Now, it's unhidden in the view. Let's go back and uh, put it back to how it was. And I'm going to go back to the section now. Uh, control tab. And let me just actually close that one out. Okay, control tab, and you'll notice these objects are sitting in space. Now, here's where it gets good. This was the one that was hosted. Now, remember, this was the speaker, and I'm going to roll over that speaker, and I'm picking. Now, when I pick the speaker, you'll notice I have no control over how to change him. These, however, if Mr. Architect Man decides to move the ceiling up, I can grab this guy, and I'll just do a little crossing. I do it in plan view or elevation view, and I highlight him. Notice that these guys, try that again, use a little crossing. Okay, so I'm going to grab those three elements, and it says diffusers. So they say, hey, I'm nine feet off the ground. You want to go ten feet? Not a problem. I just type ten enter, and you see they jump up. So this way I have full control over the elements. So as things change and move around, I don't get orphaned uh, objects. I don't get objects that uh, blow up in my model. It, it's not as slick because they don't automatically update. But what it does, it gives me full control over the objects. So this may be a recommended choice when you start using Revit, uh, especially after you run into a lot of, let's say, orphaned objects. Now, back to how do I deal with this crazy element? Well, here's a quick fix that'll work. What we can do is associate it with a level. Now, I'm going to come up top here, and just for down and dirty, let's say I know the architect has a 10-foot ceiling in here. I'm going to go, let's say, to architecture, set a level, and I'm going to put it right at the ceiling here and I'm going to call it mechanical. Okay. Now whatever you call it, it's up to you, but you'll notice that it sets to 10 feet, mechanical 5, 10 feet. Now I can grab this element and here's where it gets fancy. 
You'll notice when we drop this down, we have some options here. Edit work plane, pick new. Now, if I hit edit work plane, it's going to throw a fit and it says, hey, wait, what's going on here? I'm going to say, go to mechanical 5. I hit OK, and it jumps right up. I'm thinking, hey, that was pretty easy. I think it actually was. Now that element is associated with that level. So let's say architect man goes in, uh, adjusts the ceiling down again. And I'll do that, play uh, devil's advocate. And I'm doing this in one file just for simplicity. Architect moves back down nine feet because you tell him I can't fit my ducks in there. Yeah, the hosted one moves. Now I've got all my, let's say, speakers that were orphaned earlier associated with the mechanical level. I then come in here and I change that mechanical level to nine. You'll notice how all of them jump down. So it's a quick way for me to make this happen. You'll say, well, Ken, what if you know I've got multiple levels and this and that? Not a problem. You can actually come in here and create a level in this instance. And it might be a little overwhelming right now, but if you needed to, you could actually create a level called conference room ceiling. Okay? Uh, you could have a bunch of them. Let's say conference room ceiling. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to host this guy to the conference room ceiling. Again, edit work plane. You go to conference room ceiling. So he jumps to that ceiling. Now, I'm only moving this level and I only have my conference room ceiling elements to jump up and down. So another way to make it happen, so let's say we're going to make that to 10 feet. I hit enter and they go up. And uh, these were not hosted, so they float freely. This was a hosted element, okay? So uh, now that's a couple of ways to make it happen. So hopefully um, this cleared up the orphan aspect of Revit and objects that are um, stuck in places. So back into the plan view. Again, grab the elements that are orphaned. And if it is a hosted element like so, you can then host it to a new, new face using these tools here. Pick new or edit work plane. I'm a big fan of edit the work plane because I don't have to deal with moving them around. I just move them in the, their elevation. You'll notice I can pick the different levels here. Now, you don't see it in plan, but they've actually jumped to the right location. So, uh, hope you enjoyed the tip of the week. If you have any questions, give us a call. Uh, cadtechseminars.com on the web. Thank you.